going to the Columbia Ice Field. I know it says it on my big red bus and the tickets and plastered everywhere, but our marketing team doesn't know the difference between an ice field and a glacier, so lucky for you, by the end of this tour, you will be way more qualified than they are, that's for sure. <laughs> but we are going to Athabasca Glacier, and here she comes around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Yeehaw! Your turn. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Yeehaw! There she is. It's so gorgeous out. Oh my goodness. But I want to bring your attention out that right window. Out that right window. Can you tell me what you see? Mountains. Mountains? Do you see rocks? Yeah, yeah. what are they? Pebbles and... Yeah. Isn't that cool? Rubble. Rubble? Rubble. Yeah. Well, this isn't any ordinary dirt pile. This is what we call a lateral moraine. So if you're looking at the top ridge of this giant dirt pile here, this tells us the bare minimum of how tall a glacier once was. Bare minimum. So Athabasca Glacier would have been taller than us where we're driving right now at one point in time. That is crazy. I'm five too. Everything's taller than me, but that's huge. I feel that. Yeah. <laughs> and how that lateral moraine was placed there was by the glacier. When it was pushing forward, it was tearing apart the ground, destroying everything in its pathway and spitting all the debris out the sides. So we are on top of one lateral moraine right now. And there is a second one out that right window across the valley, the big giant dirt pile with streaks and boulders down the side of it and we can see the ridge is touching the tree line out that right window that giant ridge again that's the second lateral moraine and it tells us bare minimum bare minimum on how tall a glacier once was so Athabasca would have also touched the tree forest the tree line out that right window at one point in time as well that is ginormous now we are going to go down the steepest unpaved commercial road in all of North America. Ooh, are you guys nervous? Yes. I am not. I've been driving this all day. Have you got your brakes on? <laughs> have you got your brakes on? I have them ready if I need them. Okay. I got my 6x6, six six, my retarder, my auto brake system, and my foot will be over the service brake okay. soon. Oh, I just gotta awesome. push forward a little bit further. This <laughs> now, like when you're at the top of the road with this stuff. Yeah, well this is a 32% grade and these buses are built specifically for this road and this road only and can withhold up to 40%. There are 24 of these buses in the entire world and Pursuit owns 22 of them. One is owned by Australia and the second is, is owned by the United States and they, they are both in the Arctic doing some scientific research. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, well, I just want to remind you guys, remember to stay buckled in. I don't want you shifting around, sliding up to the top here, stealing my coffee. I need my coffee. <laughs> so, but do feel free to open up your windows. You take that black metal strip and you slide it open. You can stick your phone and camera out there, take pictures and videos, but keep in mind, if you drop your phone outside that window, I will have the greatest privilege of laughing at you because I am not stopping my bus to pick it up. And I want everybody to put their hands in the air. Everybody, everybody, and say we. We're the slowest roller coaster ride of your life. <laughs> this is the kind of speed I need for a roller coaster. I don't like them going fast and upside down. <laughs> now before we start talking about ice fields and glaciers, we have to go down to the basics and understand the creation of that glacier ice. There is this process called fernification, and that is the process of glacier ice being formed. And it's very similar as to building a snowball. So we scoop up a handful of snow and we squeeze it nice and tight and we want to make a nice giant snowball to throw at Tia for outing me on my, my Nutella 
So we're going to put on a couple more layers of snow on top of that snowball. And that essentially is how glacier ice is created. But let's get down to the details. So in your freezer back at home, you have this 50% of oxygen inside of them. But in a snowflake, in a single snowflake, it holds 90% of oxygen. So when there is snow piling on top of snow, gravity is pulling it down. The weight of the other snow pile is squishing it down, compressing all of that air out from 90% of oxygen decreases to 10%, and that is glacier ice. And with such little oxygen inside of that glacier ice, it then is only allowing certain colors of the prism to shine through and others to get reflected back. And that is why we see glacier ice as blue, because it's the only color that is allowed to shine through. But instead of making a snowball in just a couple seconds, it takes five years for one snowflake to turn into glacier ice. So it's a very long and slow process. Now if you are looking out your left window, then bring your eyes forward about 11 o'clock you are going to see these ginormous ice staircases. And at the top of those ice staircases is the Columbia Ice Field. And that is approximately 165 kilometers square. It straddles two provinces, Alberta and British Columbia, and it sits within two national parks, Jasper being our favorite one, of course. And it can hold 32 tails of BAM on top of it. If you guys went to BAM pretty big. Now for an ice field to be classified as one, it has to feed two or more glaciers. And our Columbia ice field is triple qualified. It goes above and beyond and it feeds six. So we have Athabasca straight ahead of us. There is Dome Glacier, Stutfield, Saskatchewan, Castlegard, and Columbia. Six glaciers. And how that ice is is um, feeding the glaciers, the ice field, is very similar as to pouring a glass of water into the palm of your hand. I do just have to slow down here and let this other bus go down the ice road, but that's okay, we'll, we'll keep talking about everything we see. So if you imagine the palm of your hand as the ice field, and we have a glass of water, and that glass of water is the fruitification. We pour the glass of water into the palm of our hand, and that water is going to rise all the way up till it hits the edge of our palm, and it's gonna overflow, and it's gonna overflow between our fingers, forming those glaciers. But let's think about it with that fruitification process. So it's snowing, it's a blizzard, there's so much snow piling on top of each other, on top of the mountain. It's creating that fruitification process, and it's rising all the way up all that glacier ice. And so there is so much glacier ice being created all at once and it's not slowing down. And it's, it needs somewhere to push all that extra ice off of. So it pushes the glacier ice off of the side of the mountain, forming those outlet glaciers. And that's when we see gravity take control. It pulls that glacier ice, pulls it down from the peak of the mountain and pulls it forward. And that is how an ice field feeds glaciers. Has anybody been on a glacier before? Yeah. One person. Yeah. Two. Fox Glacier, New Zealand. New Zealand. Oh, Woo! that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, I can't believe the rest of the bus just lied to me. <laughs> We're actually on Athabasca Glacier right now. Oh, yeah. 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 There we go. You're looking around thinking I'm crazy, thinking I don't know the difference between rocks and ice, but I do. I do. I'll tell you what I mean. This is what we call the ice core moraine. So we are surrounded by roughly 260 million year old mountains. You guys, that is older than my sister. That is so old. And so these mountains are deteriorating. They're very shale and they're very fragile. And so when that glacier ice is pushing forward, it's cutting up the underneath side of all of those mountains. And it's forming a lot of rock slides and all that debris comes crumbling down, the boulders, the dirt, the pebbles, you name it, all of it. And it covers the ice core, the glacier that's cutting up underneath it, 
underneath it. But we are driving on about one meter thick of debris right now, of dirt and rock and rubble and you name it, on top of the ice. And so the moment we finished descending down that lateral moraine was the beginning of the ice core moraine. And it's being preserved by this top layer and that's why it's so much higher up than all this exposed glacier ice. Now we're all gonna wave at my boss. This is my driver manager, David. Make sure we're happy so he doesn't fire me tomorrow. <laughs> I like my job, I wanna keep it. <laughs> <laughs> He's French. He's from France, so he would get mad and then start talking to me in a French accent. It's so funny. You got French guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, French. oh. I'm in trouble. He's not French. He's not French. He's French. So if we imagine we are on a beach right now, and that sand is burning hot, it's scorching the bottom of our sole of our foot. So we dig our toes in just a little bit deeper and we will find all that nice, cool, cold sand. That top layer is preserving it. And it's making sure it's staying stationary, it's not shifting around too much, and it's staying nice and chilly. And that's what that debris was doing with the ice core moraine. So an Athabasca glacier is completely gone. The ice core moraine will last for another 100 years. Now I'm going semi-slow right now. I'm going about a kilometer because we just accomplished driving down the steepest road in North America. And the next job is to travel through the tire wash. Very difficult. Do you guys know what it does? No, it does. No? I'll tell you. Yeah, I'll tell you. It's washing my tires. Nah. <laughs> and that's because I'm trying to make sure these tires are squeaky clean for your photos. But most importantly, I don't want to be dragging on mud and dirt and rocks on top of this glacier because that would cause the albedo effect. And what that is, is when the light is shining down from outer space, it's reflected back into the atmosphere off of all those light white colors. But when there's a dark color, it absorbs the light. It doesn't reflect it. And when it absorbs all that light nonstop, it heats up really, really fast. So if I were to bring a black rock on top of the glacier, it would heat up and melt the glacier. We don't want that to happen. But we often do see natural causes of that albedo effect on a daily basis because of cryokinite. And cryokinite is dust particles and chemicals in the atmosphere. And last year, British Columbia had some nasty wildfires, and that and the smoke got trapped within the valley here, and the ashes fell on top of the glacier. And it looks like a black soft blanket on top of the glacier ice. And because it's black, it absorbs the light, heats up, and it melts the glaciers, opening up crevasses and mill wells, ginormous ice cracks, sooner than when they should. Now, speaking of hazards, we have a few things to go over. We are the last tour of the day, and we do have this place sectioned off, and you can tell where it is because it looks a little bit graded and lots of people have been walking around today. But I do have to take out the boundary signs, so please do not cross all of the graded area with the snow. If you do, I'm not really trying to talk and drive. I'm not trying to rescue. I don't have to call Parks Canada. <laughs> Parks Canada is a part of the government, and, and we all know how long that takes. It's like five to ten business days just for the paperwork to go through. So you'd be stuck down there for five to ten business days. So make sure you stay within this graded area. And do not go behind my bus. If I catch you behind my bus and I'm backing up, and I have to turn you into Flat Stanley or a pancake, I'm not going to be happy. Because then I have to write up an incident report, and it's just a lot of work. So it's the end of the day, guys. That's lovely. <laughs> and so we are bus 533. Like I said, we're the last bus of the day. If you see me backing up and smiling and waving, I'm going to laugh at you, because you're going to have to run all the way down to the glacier to catch your vehicle. Because uh, I will leave you behind. We are to be on the bus at 6 o'clock. We have roughly half an hour. So do take your time, but be on time. All right. So 
That's about it. What Ooh. time are we to be on the bus? Six, Six o'clock. Six o'clock. I'm a great model, so if you want to take pictures of me, feel free. <laughs> I can take your pictures after two. Just let me know. All right, and I'll leave my door open and I'll turn the heat on. Thank you. Thank you.